Hi there, uh, fellow spiritual Canadians, I suppose. Um, I've been talking about uh, moving woodworking machinery with shear legs and uh, just brought up a few questions in my mind. So I've been uh, mainly about things like the tension on the back line. Uh, so just bit, made a little rig just to play with it and uh, so just see the forces involved. Um, you see I've got a pair of little uh, well, oak one and a half by one and a half poles. Um, there's a water container with 10 kilograms, that's 22 pounds of water in. I've got a little old uh, tree climbing throw bag, which is my plumb bob. Um, there's a bit of the throw line coming forwards just to, just to stop the, uh, the whole thing falling backwards. Uh, and then I've got my old climbing line here, the red one, with a prussic loop, so the whole thing is is adjustable and I can lean the thing forward and that's then strung down to a spring balance uh, tied off to a big oak post and uh, there's a little black and red strop that's just there to hold everything in case the spring balance falls out so it's probably leaning at the moment I don't know about five degrees forward something like that and considering there's 10 degrees on the hook uh, 10 kilos on the hook we are at uh, about a kilo and a half of strain on there. Uh, it's quite interesting when you bring the whole rig back. Uh, there's still it's still basically weighing the, a bit of the rope, so uh, you know it never kind of gets back down to zero. But uh, yeah, we let it go forwards, and there's a kilo. Um, and then I can slacken off. Oh, I'm going to have to go on the tripod to slacken that rope off and let the line go forwards, and then we'll see how we do. We've gone forward to about I don't know, 15 degrees, something like that, and we've got a reading on the spring balance of around four and a half kilos already. So um, we're heading up towards uh, a strain on the back line equivalent to just under half the weight of what's on the on the hook. So we'll go a little bit further forward and uh, give it another reading. Okay. So again, you can see the angle there. I mean, if that was uh, out in the real world on a hard surface, you'd start to worry about the the the, the feet skidding away. Um, that's reading uh, just over seven kilograms on the spring balance. Um, so yeah, we're approaching 70% of the weight of what's on the hook is being transferred down the line to that post. So again, if you had a if you had a you had a ton up here or a ton a ton dangling on a chain hoist. That would be transferred to you know the tow hitch of a vehicle or a bit of a building. You've got to be a bit careful. Um, let's go a bit further forward again. Okay. So there we go, we're pretty much on uh, 10 kilos on the back line. I mean, some of that's going to be a little bit of weight from the rigging, uh, equi uh, the, the rope gear. I mean, obviously that'll be fractional when you when you start getting up onto the big loads. But um, you know, really, a lot of the, a lot of the, the weight of that, uh, the weight of what's on the hook is is being th is essentially a thrust down the legs. Um, uh, you know, you, you just you just. It's tempting, obviously, to, to tilt the whole thing forward a long way to try and get reach. But as we've been worrying about, the, the feet want to go. And also it's starting to put a pretty massive stress on that uh, on that back line. I think if we go beyond uh, 45 degrees, which would be pretty frightening, you would be doing a lot of, you know, you'd be doing a lot of weight on that back line. Um, I'll show you a couple of pictures, because i just, just work something out. Okay. Okay, so one thing I worked out as I was sort of had this in my head was uh, obviously you've got the uh, 
the, the main poles. They're acting like a like a like a strut really. Um, and all this back line is doing is just restraining them from going forwards. And, and obviously, the straighter up they are, the more of the weight just goes just goes straight down the legs into the ground. And I realised that it's actually uh, sorry. That's apologise for the PK. That should obviously be a Sega uh, machine. Um, realise actually, it's much like having having a, a ladder up uh, up against a wall with you know as your man with his with his, ha with his hammer. Um, that um, obviously a nice a nice steep ladder. Obviously, it doesn't put much weight on the building. Um, obviously, a really steep ladder is very easy to overturn backwards. And then, the further out they get, um, you know, the more rock solid they are, the more the more weight is pushing onto the roof. Um, but um, yeah, it then it then gave me the thought. Really, it's essentially the same. You know, we've we've taken you've taken the weight of the guy off the top, and you're hanging him on the bottom. And instead of it leaning on a building, you've got a um, you've got a back line just restraining it. So. Um, it did make me wonder whether if you had something fairly light to lift up into the top floor of a building, maybe whether uh, you know a carefully rigged, a carefully rigged industrial extension ladder with a with a good uh, wide foot bar would be a kind of an ideal rigging point. You know, you could within the, within the weight limit of a, of a a fat man jumping up and down with a with a paintbrush and a hammer, um, you could pretty much do the same thing and lift a lift a relatively small bit of machinery or equipment. Way up high, or swing a swing a small beam up, um, using a ladder, maybe a ladder you don't want to use again for people, um, as as your as your strut point. You know, it's a it's a nice lightweight, extendable piece of equipment to uh, to get some height. Um, but yeah, no, I'll try and do I'll try and do this a little bit more with um, with a bigger scale. But um, yes, yeah, so it's just quite interesting getting a getting a few ideas on um, on weights and measures and things like that. Um, I might just play with something on the pulley, uh, on a pulley, and we'll have a look at the lifting weights and the strains up on that top point. Okay, back in a sec. Okay. Um, just having a play with this. I've knocked half the water out, so this is now uh, reading at five kilograms, uh, eleven pounds. Um, so if you're using, if this was a machine and you're using using a chain hoist from here to here, and just uh, just drawing it up. That's that's what it would weigh, and that would be the force on the uh, on the top hook. Um, it often seems a good idea when doing this sort of thing to obviously not be under this lifting point and not be operating a chain hoist because of the dangers of this coming down. Uh, and you think, okay, let's operate a winch somewhere else, and we'll come up to a pulley and back down again. Um, that has the unfortunate effect of putting a lot of force on this top point. So we'll just have a play with that and have a look. Put that down. No, that one on that. So there we go. So the lifting points. We've got a. We still got the same. We still got the same point of lift. Uh, and we're now having to go at that five kilos from there, and that's using that point there because there's five kilos here, five kilos on this leg of the rope, and five kilos on this leg of the rope to restrain it that adds up to 10 kilos here. So this has now got double the movement of uh, when we just had the water hung off there. So let's do it. Let's chuck that off, put it on there. That only goes halfway. That's, that's look, just four fingers there. Um, if we put a pulley on, on the lifting point, you know, ignoring the fact there's a little strain gauge in there, um, we get double the force on there. And, it doesn't sort of make sense initially. So there you go. If you're just holding on to it there, if that's all locked off and, and there's no there's no weight, no load on there, that's fine. That's that would still be just at your five kilos. But the moment you restrain it from elsewhere, you double up, you go up to you go up to ten kilos. So if you had a vehicle off here and you were pulling and you had a ton of machine on there, you essentially got a ton of pull there just to stop it moving, which means this point up here has got double the weight on, double the load, and that means your back line as well uh, will have double the amount of force. So that's one thing to be very, very careful of, is not to be pulling with vehicles from elsewhere because you're doubling your chances of failure in your anchorage at the back, uh, your line here, and then the framework here. So uh, Sion's method of using a chain hoist that's just held here and standing underneath, is, well, you can stand off to one side obviously, but 
operate in the small chain. That's really the most sensible and safe thing to do. Okay, good night. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.